welcome to Expat Your Life. My name is Abram and I'm coming to you with interesting stories from expats all around the world to inspire you to make the move. Today we have Johan and Alicia. Hey guys. Hello. Hey. Hi guys. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, very really, good. Really um, hot, but doing good. Yeah. Well, um, all things set aside, it's a we're kind of in a in the middle of a lockdown, but not really. But all the restaurants are closed, no coffee, which sucks. But um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, same here. But I stocked up on coffee before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, so let's uh, let's chat a little bit. Um, and we'll jump into kind of your story. Uh, first off, where are you from? Uh, we're from South Africa. Okay. Like a lot of people here in Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I've met more South Africans here than I've met anywhere else in the world. <laughs> There's a lot of us. So we're from a, um, from a province called Gauteng hey. and a city called Pretoria. Pretoria. Okay. Or, Nice, nice. And and uh, so is Victoria super nice? Should people go and visit there? Yeah. Um, it, it's called, yeah, it, it's more of a traditional city. So it's not, um, it's more like a, how can you say, it's more like a cultural city. Then we have, we have Johannesburg. That's like the, the business capital. Like Ho Chi Minh. Um, and then we have Cape Town. Which is like that's like the international. That's city, like so. the name, basically. Yeah, all of, yeah. The, all of the international people. Okay, um, beautiful, beautiful. Very, the very nature, beautiful. the beaches. Table Mountain. Yeah. Ah, I've I've heard, I've heard. I haven't been yet. It's it's on my list of places to visit. <laughs> You'll love it. Cool, cool. All right, and how long have you been living in Vietnam or living abroad? Uh, six months. We came here at the end of December. December 2020. And then we had yeah. to do the whole quarantine thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, about That's six just... months. So it's not, not very long. We're still newbies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so six months in Vietnam. Is this your first country living abroad? Yes, yeah. we've we've pretty much only traveled, but that, that was short amount of time, uh, in short amounts of time. So, um, and more like holidays or vacations, not really, really like two weeks. Yeah, this is the this is the longest we've been from home ever. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about being you know far from home? How does it feel six months in? Well, um, you do miss your family. The initial mm -hmm. kind of excitement gets kind of I don't know. So it starts to fade. Yeah, yeah it's, it starts to fade, and then the whole blues about oh my family, and you know just like having the normal Sunday lunch with them. You kind of miss that or your friends and for us i think the biggest thing is our doggos we don't yeah. have our pets yeah our two dogs oh, and, um, yeah i've even like checked if i can get them here but it's super expensive so at the moment mm. we can't afford it but um yeah that that's the biggest thing for me <laughs> okay okay so it's a it's kind of like a, a bitterness at the moment six months in do you regret making the move at all no, no. I think I think the the situation we had back home, and obviously that's the the whole world situation. Um, like as soon as we started working, we were like, "Wow, okay, no, I think we we think this was the the correct decision." Mm. And um, we always knew that there were going to be challenges, and that um, we were going to need to adjust to a new country and a new culture. And um, so I think. I think th those are things to be expected. You, you have to kind of um, know that that's coming your way, and um, but also kind of um, in the same breath, I think it's a good thing, you know, because it it challenges your it challenges your way of thinking and the way that you look at the world, and um, kind of forces you to to break out of the bubble that you were in in your in your country, you know, the way you grew up, and um, so I think in that sense, it's. It's kind of refreshing and yeah you yeah. learn so much you learn so much about other mm. people other countries and and especially about yourself mm. <laughs> like what you're used to and what you can be um what you can do and what you can become accustomed to and what you thought you would never do but now you do it <laughs> and um yeah so it's like it's it's very liberating it's very it's like mm. refreshing yeah 
All right, so now we'll go back, um, and we'll, I'm just gonna ask, like, as far as knowing that you wanted to move overseas, knowing that you wanted to make a move, what was your initial motivation to do that? Well, um, unfortunately, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so we are professional musicians, and we studied music, and we've been doing music, I mean, for the past 15, 20 years, basically. And um, coming from South Africa, everything was shut down for months. So live entertainment events, areas, uh, pubs, everything that you can actually go and do what you do has been closed for a long period of time. So we were out of work pretty much. We could teach, but still it had to be online or something. So it was a bit of a tricky situation. So we had to mm -hmm. look for other alternatives. And being music teachers as well, we thought, well, we could try the ESL thing and yeah. It's been really fun up till now, so yeah. Yeah, it's been great. Okay. Now, are you bringing music into the classroom? Uh, so you're teaching English and music together? Sometimes I've heard him, especially I'm now <laughs> being online. You actually yeah. have your instrument yet. So he's been doing it a few times. We'll start the lesson playing yeah. guitar. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was one, I think it was a, um, a Sprout lesson on a jazz band. Yeah. So I played a bit of a jazz uh, little intro to the lesson. And the kids are just like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So um, they were like, teacher, you play guitar? I was like, yeah, I try, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, so, you know, you had that motivation. COVID kind of pushed you to, to make that move. Um, now, why did you pick Vietnam specifically? Um, well, we had quite a couple of um, countries on our shortlist, but when we started comparing um, the cost of living and the availability of jobs, and um, also we found Apex, which is a which is a, a great company, we think, um, uh, which also kind of tied in with some of the other goals we we had because of um, their setup and. The fact that you only teach um, in the evenings, you have some time in the day to to do other things. So we wanted to still have time to invest in our music, and maybe we also wanted to have time to further um, our education and yeah. continue studying. So, so, so these were important things for us. Um, and then, obviously, the cost of living in Vietnam. And we we came to Vietnam previously in 2018. We had a holiday year for two weeks. For we two traveled. Weeks, we traveled, got on motorbikes, drove down from Hanoi to Da Nang, and it was amazing. So we thought, yeah, we we kind of know what's happening in Vietnam, if you could say we, that. We really loved it. It was like amazing. It was one of our favorite holidays. So we just decided, why not? Yeah. So, I mean, go live where you actually had a holiday, and it was amazing. So why not? Mm. You can. Yeah, and some of the other countries, we would have been much further from home and uh, have have less free time and obviously cost of living would have been so much higher. So uh, another priority for us was, was to save okay, or, or is to save, save some money, um, which, which I think it's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing, especially in, um, when there's a, um, a pandemic going around. So, so yeah, yeah, those are all, all you're things. You're not allowed to go out, so take your money. <laughs> <laughs> those are all things that influence our decision, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And Vietnam's like super safe. One of the most safest countries mm. in, in the world, basically, now with the whole pandemic. Well, we hope yeah. that it'll stay that way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're all hoping that this lockdown one will end soon and, and then, yeah. uh, you know, figure out a solution to uh, completely combat and, like, end the virus and get back to yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so, you know, your first six months, we've talked about the motivations and, and you know, moving forward and the pros and, and just kind of going in. Now I want to talk about like the pros and cons of what you've seen so far, your list of pros and cons. We'll start off with the pros. What are some of the pros of living abroad? Um, well, I think, well, specifically for Vietnam, uh, well, I just said it, but I'm going to say it again is, is the cost of living is really, is really low, okay. which is, which is great in Vietnam. And also I think another, another thing that's great is that, um, you don't need a car, which is, yeah. which is 
it's it, it's it great. Which, which sounds like a little a little counterintuitive, but it's actually great to not have a car. It's a, it's amazing. It's so much cheaper, and um, it's more exciting to to drive a bike. And um, well, we used to to ride bikes back in South Africa as well, so we we've always loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, uh, I think another, another pro would be, um, the people, uh, especially, yeah. especially the students, the um, students are just awesome. they're great. I mean, like they're really, we had really students great. back in South Africa, but the, the, I don't know what it is exactly, if it's the culture or how, but the students, yeah, are just, mm -hmm. I don't know, they kind of getting, they creep into your heart. They have a way of doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, some pros for you. Some pros for me, I think eating healthy. Okay. Like the food there yeah, is, well, it's not always, the, it's your choice as well. But I mean, mm. generally, even the, the, the food that you get from the restaurant seems to be much healthier than what we used to in the Western cultures or mm. restaurants. And um, you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and um, try new things, try new food that you actually don't really know what you're going to get or what you eat. <laughs> but... You just go for it. And yeah, so I think there are many pros. Oh, the nature, yeah, as well. Mm. Like, especially us having during the day kind of a little bit off. We love to go out every morning, just drive around the country and see if we can find a spot that we haven't seen before. Mm. And yeah, so the lifestyle is quite different. And I feel like we live more instead of just work. Okay, okay. And uh, what city are you living in? Ving City, so it's in Yang. Okay. Um, so it's so. kind of central Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, oh, we think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we 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 also lived in Ho Chi Minh for for three months, and um, so there are various pros and cons to living in Ho Chi Minh versus living, living in yeah. Ving. So um, it depends on your personality, I would yes. say. So obviously in Ho Chi Minh City, I mean, you can pick and choose. The menu is nearly infinite. You can get pretty much anything to eat um, anything in Ho Chi Minh City. Amazing places to stay. Yeah, <laughs> you literally get one apartment that yeah. is not like Vietnamese. That's a little bit more modern. <laughs> and all the uh, Western people live in the same building. <laughs> yeah, so... And uh, obviously, you you don't have a, a big variety to choose from um, to eat in being. So yeah. you kind of that's kind of. But it's also been a good thing because it's kind of forced you to eat more more well, healthy yeah. and eat more fruits and um, kind of. But and also at the same time, force forces you to eat more local. Um, so you end up eating more more of the local cuisine. And you end up drinking. <laughs> Draft uh, beer the whole time. <laughs> Every evening. It's nothing <laughs> else to drink. It's else. But yeah. it's still amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds great. I'm in Ho Chi Minh City, so I haven't experienced the, uh, the countryside in Vietnam yet. So that brings some things and helps me uh, decide whether I want to go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, perfect. So we've talked about the pros, and then we talked about the pros and cons of big city versus small city living. Uh, what would you say would be the cons uh, since you've moved overseas? Cons? Well, obviously, I think for most people, it's just family, friends, not having them close by. I know you can Skype and Facebook and all, uh, all that, but um, it's just different. I mean, and you do kind of lose contact at some point. Um, and as I said, not having our doggos here. And what else? I think another thing is probably the the, the language barrier. It can be, yeah. Um, and because also they have a different way of doing things. And um, so just trying to kind of get get your message through of like what you what are you trying to communicate or what what, what do you want to actually what do you actually want to do? Uh, sometimes it gets completely lost in translation. So it's um yeah, and no, so that's a that, that's a change, but it, but at the same time, it's also sometimes um, like uh, it could be really funny trying, trying to communicate with someone. And you guys don't speak the same language, and some sometimes you find really cool and creative ways to kind of understand each other, which is like whether it's like um, using hand signals or um, 
using objects or things around you <laughs> to kind of try and explain what you want or what you need. Um, so yeah, it's been, um, I would say that's a, that's a con. So the language barrier and, um, hmm. She can make the time to learn at least a few words to get by. So that's not really, it's at the, at the beginning, it's a, it's a problem. Yeah. And I, and I think, yeah, I think the other, the other things, the normal things like, um, getting homesick and missing simple things, you know, the small things like, um, just your favorite food. Like I yeah. cannot flip and find jelly tots and I just want <laughs> jelly tots. And I even asked my parents, can they just send me jelly tots? And they told me, no, it's going to cost like, uh, about three mil. I'm like, okay, no, <laughs> leave the jelly tots. It's fine. <laughs> So yeah, I think, oh, and the other, other big con obviously is, is, um, driving or, or traffic in, oh, yeah. in Vietnam is very, very challenging. Like, and it's crazy living in Ho Chi Minh, um, it's, it's much busier, busier in, in Ho Chi Minh. So th there's a lot more, um, cars and, and scooters and stuff on the road, um, than the R and Ving, but. It, it kind of almost makes people, um, if, if I can dare to say it, drive in a more straight kids. line, <laughs> you know, to men, cause there's more people Cause you're where, where, to drive. Where, where in Bing people just like, <laughs> yeah, there's less of them, no, but it's crazy. more, it's more chaotic. So I, we, we thought it, it would be much better. It is a little bit better, but it's not like, it's still crazy. Remember, you still really like have to be on it to not get into a, yeah. I remember accident. feeling like every time I go to work. Because we kind of stayed in the middle of two of our centers where we, where we work, uh, especially now in Ho And um, I was about 25, 30 minutes out and he was 20 minutes out. And I remember just driving and feeling every time I get on the going to work, I felt like I'm going into battle. <laughs> and I'm just like, I have to be super aware and it's like battlefield. And then coming home, it's a little bit better, but yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's, it's fun, but it's really crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The amount of experiences like life and death experiences that you have on the bike in that short period of time is, is, is ridiculous. Like, like I've seen, I've seen like, um, um, I've, I've seen like a, like an 18 wheeler truck. Oh, it's a guy on a scooter for absolutely no reason. Huh? And he was like, this guy was like chilling on his scooter and, um, or his bike. Sorry, we call it scooters in South Africa, like, because it's a smaller <laughs> and it's automatic. So a, let's call it a motorbike. So, um, and he had, he had like a, uh, lots of luggage on his, um, like they always on, do. on his, on his motorbike. And he was just chilling there and the, the truck driver was like hooting at him, hooting at him, coming up from behind and he didn't hear. So he just like, just hit him. Like, and I was like, hey, it's so unnecessary. The guy literally didn't hear, <laughs> didn't hear <me. laughs> Yeah. So like, yeah, the, I have to say the truck drivers and, truck drivers are and the bus drivers, they're quite, um, like, um, yeah, they're, they're like clear of them, road <laughs> hogs and they're mer merciless, you know, like they just, yeah. So, oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just, they just don't care. They're like, whatever. Yeah. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. So now, uh, in your six months, you've obviously had a ton of experiences and like you said, it's starting to wear off. What was your best experience in the last six months? Yeah, the best experience. Best experience. Um, this is kind of a difficult one. To, I don't think we had like one main experience. Out, yeah. I think we've got many small little ones. Okay. So yeah. like, like a collection coming together. Yeah, yeah, and for us, we love traveling. So whenever we get a chance, even if it's just like we have mm. Mondays off together, so then usually we'll go out somewhere on a Monday, mm. and um, usually maybe come back only the Tuesday. So we love doing that little things, and Vietnam gives you many opportunities to do that, and many places that you can go. So. Every time we do that, that's an amazing experience for us. So every time we go to the Nang or we've been to Pongna, I'm not sure I'm saying any of these correctly, but yeah. Uh, it's it's Pongna. Pongna. Pong okay. Yeah. PH is the F. Okay. <laughs> and um, Ning Bing and all these places are just amazing. And um, yeah, so whenever we go there, mm. we just, it's like really, yeah, best trips. 
Okay. Yeah, we've we've been to a couple of places and and um, yeah, it's just really great to see more Vietnam and like I have to say, um, like if you're in a Vietnamese city, they they're very consistent. <laughs> they they um, all kind of have the like more or less the same vibe, and then they have some things that that set them aside. But um, but yeah, like going to different places and seeing different things are, are definitely a highlight. So those are some of our best experiences. Um, yeah, I think just being able to travel through Vietnam. Yeah, okay. so. definitely. Right, right. Excellent. Now, what would you say would be the worst experience that you've had? Well, I had a, like a, an accident <laughs> with my bike. So, you know, I was just driving like all the rest of people and the guy just drove in front of me like they do. And I just didn't have time to wreck. So I basically flew, flew over the guy and your um, leg was all messed up and I had to drive. I was coming home from, from work. So luckily it was not on my way there. And then I had to drive back with an all crooked little bike. <laughs> but, uh, and I still had to drive that bike the next day because we couldn't go. We couldn't book it in immediately. Yeah, so I had to like drive like this for, a, for two days. Too, you know? But um, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't. I didn't get hurt like seriously or anything. Mm. It was just like a a frowned upon experience. <laughs> 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 and you, did you have something bad? Um, I don't really think so. I think we've been fortunate to not have um, really bad experiences. Um, I would just say in general, for me, is 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 traffic, like traffic and driving in Vietnam. Sometimes you have really good days. Sometimes you have really bad days. Like, and you just you just want to sometimes stop someone and and, and ask them, like, "Hey, man, do you know that this is so dangerous?" And I. I'm going to get hurt, but you're also going to get hurt. <laughs> so please, you know, just try and look. I don't know. I suppose that's the, the, the cultural you difference. You're going to the country. <laughs> and um, it's kind of that mentality you'll find until you're not. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, so, so I would just say that, that that's kind of, I think that's probably my biggest gripe at the moment. But it's also not like something that's, that's, um, yeah, it's not a it's not such a big deal it's not i, I think uh i think if you can just drive really slowly you'll be fine okay yeah and if you if you have if you make an accident or someone drives in front of you and they're not going a bazillion you should be fine bazillion miles an hour you should be fine oh but i've seen i don't know if you've seen uh um i've never i never saw them in ho chi minh but in in Ving, you get these young they call them young bulls yeah the, um, the, the young buffaloes young yeah, buffaloes buffalo, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So those kids are crazy and they're oh like super, super young. They take their bikes and they go like this, but the next part yeah. like, oh, I'm like, dude, you're going to fall down. <laughs> yeah. <And> they, <laughs> they never wear helmets. They look like they're like 16 or I don't know how, uh, how old are they. I don't know. Super, they look super young. So, um, but yeah, they're, they're quite reckless. Um, but it's they, fun to see them. <laughs> they, they normally travel in a herd. Yeah, right? they do. Like a pack. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So I would, I would say, yeah, just to sum it up, yeah, that's my, that's been my biggest gripe. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, those those young buffaloes are interesting and entertaining to watch. Uh, I especially like watching when they get caught. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, we see the video somewhere where the, where the cops were actually like going up. Chasing them. Chasing them, but mm. I sometimes, yeah, I, I think they've passed it and... The bikes are faster. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. They're, they yeah. they strip their bikes down and modify them, and then they lay yeah. flat on the gas tank uh, to 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 get away. And they don't care. They they're not afraid. Where I mean, the the police guys are more mature, so they actually worry about getting hurt. So, so you've seen you've seen the police catch them? Yes, I've seen the police catch them. Actually, uh, so uh, they have every time they do it like in a big scale, they actually have cameras out to like, to yeah. film it and like show them. And they, uh, they'll they find a street, they'll block them off, block off one end. And then as soon as they turn around, uh, they've got all the alleyways and other main streets blocked. So they can't like jump a curb and get away. They've got them. And they have like, oh, like, okay. like 20 to 50 other police officers on all different types of bikes to come in and just like corral them. Uh, and then they like, they have trucks there to take the bikes. They arrest them on site. Like, yeah. 
Uh, I'll see if I can find the link. I just saw it earlier this week. If I can find it, I'll send it, shoot it over to you. You'll see it. (laughs) Because it it feels like they they always get away with it. So I was like, this is crazy. And I mean, obviously they are, they are very good, but it's, they can't account for all, you know, all the variables and traffic. So at some point they're going to make a big, big mistake or a big accident. And they go so fast, they'll definitely kill someone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Now, you know, with the pros, with the cons, uh, if you can just take a moment and think of the greatest lesson that you've learned in the last six months. Yeah, I I would say probably that, um, like, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's still a boring thing to say and we've heard it a million times, but, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, people can always surprise you. Um, Vietnamese, Vietnamese people has mm, yeah. <laughs> certainly surprised me. So, I mean, um, so yeah, I think it just comes back to that thing, you know, don't, don't always, um, don't make preconceived ideas. I think you always suffer, you suffer un, un, under them. So it's not a, it's not a smart thing to do. And, um, I think I'd be open-minded. That, that's, a, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned. And I think, um, what did I want to say? Like, um, life is what you make it. So pretty much, cause I mean, you get stuck in a rut and you kind of, oh, I have to work and I have to do that. That's your choice. You can change that and you can find alternatives mm. and alternative ways of living and working and doing stuff. So literally, and it's the choice of being happy or, you know, every day what you do mm. is a choice. And how you feel about that is also your choice. <clears throat> so I think just for me, mainly, it's like life is your choice. Do with mm. it what you want, but know that that is your responsibility. If you are unhappy, it's your choice to be unhappy. Do something about it then. Okay. So, yeah. And, and then uh, another thing I've learned is that you are more adaptable than you think. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, don't, you don't always need everything that you think you need. You, you are adaptable and you... You, you can be happy. Actually you actually always need less than what you think you yeah. do. So that's one of the biggest things I think coming to Vietnam um, that you probably learn is, is um, why did I think that I needed this? Or why did I want to spend so much money on this? Or why did I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I never really needed this or that. So yeah, it's, I, mean, I think that, that's been a very valuable lesson. Yeah, it's almost like a weight off your shoulders. Like just let go of so mm-hmm. much access stuff. Excess, I mean, sorry. Yeah. And especially moving abroad, getting rid of many different things. It's just like, oh, oh. Uh, it's a little nerve wracking at first, but then when you get to it, you're like, oh man, this is awesome. This is freeing. So, yeah. All right. All right. So, you know, going off of the lessons, you know, you brought up books, don't judge a book by its cover. So we'll stick with that. Is there any sort of media books or movies or any like YouTube personalities that you followed that helped to inspire you to make, take the journey, to take that step? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, we, before, um, well, once we decided on Vietnam, um, we found a, um, a vlogger uh, on YouTube um i think his channel's name his his channel's, eli. uh yeah eli i think his channel's called um eli the bike guy and um he just basically uh uses a bicycle or like an e-bike and then he visits many cities in vietnam and then he he's got like a, a streaming platform going when he when he makes a video so he's got some 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 people um streaming in live while he's peeling through the city. So and you can see the like city. And two, three hours long. So you can yeah. just come in and out anytime. So you can see the city uh, from a street, street view perspective, which was great. Uh, you get a much better feel for it. And, um, mm-hmm. and at the same time, they're discussing many questions about the city and things about Vietnam in general. So it's, that was quite a, that was quite a mm-hmm. good Very news nice. source, which, or, um, yeah, channel to, to view to to kind of get ourselves ready and get a good idea of what's going to happen and how what 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 it's going to be like. And then there's another channel we really like. It's sailing fr- Florence. Sailing with Florence. Yes. With, yeah. It's a it's a channel about two um, two couple. Brits couple, and they just sail around the world. And uh, they've been doing it in the pandemic. 
they've been sailing for four years now, basically. Oh, wow. And they're just living off their boat. And yeah. yeah, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to see how you can actually live like that and um, yeah. all the places they actually go to. And they've been they've been stuck um uh in Indonesia for like the last year. Because of the lockdown. Because yeah. of the pandemic. And um so it's been interesting to get their perspective because they they've been on a boat. <laughs> they've literally been on the water. Yeah. They had <laughs> for... to get like fruits and vegetables from yeah. other people selling it on boats. Yeah. So coming to them and selling them. And then often the fruits or vegetables will already be kind of off or rotten, or yeah. rotten, but they don't really have a choice, so they will take it so and make a plan, yeah. Yeah, so so that's a very good channel, and that's, um, I think, it's also quite inspiring about, um, you know, because sometimes I think travel can be challenging and yeah. even scary. But, um, I mean, that's the kind of channel that inspires you to just go for it, you know, and kind of, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, so far, do you have a favorite part of your journey? Hmm. A favorite part? Oh, well, my favorite part is... Usually not the journey itself. I'm such a girl. I love planning it. So whenever like coming here was like the biggest I was just like planning and then by some fluke we, we I didn't get my moment of proper planning because they phoned us and said, No, you're gonna come this week. I'm like what? I was like, No, I had a month to plan this. What happened now? But um so but I just love that initial like excitement of planning mm. a trip and going somewhere. So even our little small trippies that we do, I'm just like excited every time to plan it. We're going to do this and we're going to stay here and then we're going to go there. And so yeah, I know I'm a girl, but I love planning stuff. So. <laughs> and you yeah, the favorite thing. Um, a favorite thing so far? Mm. Mm. Um, I think, I think I've actually been in, been enjoying the lifestyle. I think I think um, I think it's it's simpler. Um, we have less bills to pay. Yes. which is amazing. I I feel like I'm I'm carrying carrying less baggage. Like it's yeah. it's a lighter load to carry, and um, that's been great. I feel I feel less stressed, and um, I think that's 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 been invaluable. I definitely yeah, feel definitely. like. Um, so at the same time, um, I think you also still need a plan to, um, to move forward in your life. Yeah, that's still very important, um, coming to a, a different country because you can kind of, you know, get into a, a comfort, comfort zone and just kind of, you know, live there. But yeah, I think that's been very, very good for me is, is having less, it feels like less baggage, less to carry on your shoulders and, um. It just feels a little lighter and um, less stressful. Yeah. Uh, what do your friends and family think? You know, six months in, are they still supporting your idea, or are they like, "Come home"? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, initially, his mom or his parents, uh, they they did not like the idea. weren't into it. My parents were like, oh, "I knew you were gonna go overseas at some point," so yeah. But his parents, no. And um, now, actually, funny enough. When we tell them, oh, we're thinking of maybe coming back at some point, and then they're like, no, 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 just stay there. You got a job, you're doing great, just stay there. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, I mean, we, you don't know what's going to happen with, with the pandemic now, and and um, it's very difficult to, to travel internationally now, so. Is there a quote or a mantra that you live by? that has you know kind of inspired you to travel or just inspired you to create a better life uh and if you have one do you mind sharing that with us um yeah i've got one and it's it's kind of been a recent recent edition so uh, i wouldn't say i'm living by it yet but i'm trying to um so i'll read it to you okay uh, oh, it's funny too. um Oh, wait, I, I took a photo, sorry. Um, so, the quote goes as follows. Uh, Everything that can be counted does not necessarily count. Everything that counts cannot necessarily be counted. Um, so, yeah, I, I just kind of 
that seems like a really good philosophy, you know, to kind of get rid of, of um, cause, cause I think, I feel like many times, uh, growing up and, and also, you know, uh, watching the news, we get dictated to a lot of what we're supposed to like and how we're supposed to live and, and what is important. <laughs> um, but, um, at the end of the day, I think we have things that are important to ourselves. Right. And it's like, it says not, not everything that you can count is necessarily important. So, so having all the money in the world is not necessarily, it's, I think it would be great. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but it's not necessarily, um, doesn't, it doesn't equal or, um, guarantee you, um, joy or happiness. So, so I think like the second part of the quote says, um, sometimes the things that cannot be counted count more because those are the things and you, we don't always realize this from, from the get go. Sometimes it takes time to, 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 uh, to get to know, when to know what these are, but, um, you, you realize, especially I think as you get older, that those things are actually really important to, to keeping you stable and, and centered and yeah. Um, yeah, I've got, well, I don't have one. I've got like a few, and it, it, I think it depends on my mood or my like current situation, weekly even. But um, being a teacher and being here in Vietnam and seeing all these little faces, I just have this quote where, well, not really quick, but um, it is, you are the light of the world, like a city on the hilltop that cannot be hidden. And that is not my motto, but it is something that I try to live by, to be a light for these kids and to be a light for the people around me and just to be motivation and to show them like happiness and excitement and joy in the world. So, and I think all of us here basically, all the teachers, everyone basically strive to be a light for these kids. So yeah, that's my motto for my current situation. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And what's next for you? Um, well, I think, um, uh, for the, for now, I think we will probably be spend at least, um, the next year in Vietnam, maybe two next two years. Well, initially we were like at least two years. So yeah. yeah. And, um, well, depending on what happens and, um, at the same time, uh, like I said, um, uh, previously we, we would definitely like to, to study, study further. And then, um, I think once we've, uh, hopefully well, once we've acquired more qualifications, we, we actually would try to, to kind of see if we can take the, the teaching further as a career. Yeah. Take it up. And, um, yeah, the, depending on what happens in the world, but, uh, I don't think it, it doesn't seem as though things are going to go back to normal anytime soon, but, um, we'll get a new normal. So yeah, yeah it'll be. Yeah, it'll be the new normal. Yeah. So, so I think that's, that's our, I think that's our biggest thing now is to kind of get going on that and, um, you know, it's, more education. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, uh, thank you so very much for, for being on the show. Uh, before we leave, is there any advice that you'd give to someone thinking about moving abroad or just needing that motivation to do so? I would say, I would say, um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's going to suck <laughs> at some point, going to be but, um, but you can do it. Like I said, like, like I said previously, you, you are adaptable and you can do it. And, oh, the other big thing is, is, um, do your homework, um, wherever you want to go, make sure this is where you want to go or where you would be happy and, um, do it legal. <laughs> Don't, uh, yeah, get your papers in order. Get all your papers, get your qualifications, do it the right way. Don't, um, just makes it so much easier. You don't want to be banged up abroad. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Or sent home basically. Yeah. Yeah. Or pay fines or get arrested. It's just, just not worth it in a strange country. It's not worth that. So. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I just want to say a really big thank you for coming on the show and, and taking the time out of your day to tell your story. Uh, if you've been watching this content and you like it, please consider hitting the like button. It will really help. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you want to say. And, uh, you know, thank you so very much for watching up to this point. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, from me, from uh, Johan and Alicia, we want to say thank you very much. And uh, stay awesome, stay healthy, stay traveled. See ya.
Goodbye. Bye. -bye.